Sony Deville and Naomi storyline is starting to fade out, so we'll take a look at what's going on there. We'll also take a look at the John Moxley mention, Roman Reigns' power move, and much more. Let's start things off with the Sony Deville and Naomi storyline because the response from fans towards this story is quickly becoming mostly negative, and rightfully so, when you really look deep into it, and that's what we're about to do. So, this storyline started back in July, when Naomi was suddenly shifted over to SmackDown. There was no explanation given to the audience on why Naomi came to SmackDown. She just sorta walked into Sonya's office one day and revealed that she's on SmackDown now. Sonya Deville right off the bat denied Naomi of any opportunity on SmackDown. So it's not like this hatred from Sonya to Naomi was something that grew over time there, no. She instantly was hostile towards Naomi the second she walked through the door in July. Which was strange because there was no real history between these two characters, no bad blood or anything like that. So this awkwardness and hatred between them had no backstory that the audience knew of. If Naomi and Sonya previously had some massive fallout moment a few years in the past, then maybe this would have provided some better context to Sonya's action. But the fact that Sonya and Naomi never really interacted much on WWE television made the whole hostile treatment towards Naomi feel a bit weird at times since there was no real story there. A storyline like this would really work if there was some sort of story there, but that wasn't the case there. Michael Cole has been stressing a lot on commentary that we still don't know what Sonya Deville's issue with Naomi is. And that's true, and it's sad at the time because we're just around 8 months into this story, and the story honestly doesn't feel very deep at all. You would think 8 months in a long-term storyline that has a lot of layers and depth to it, but that's not really the case here with Naomi and Sonya Deville. There's no long list of events or progression in this story at all. This 8 month story can be summarized in a few short words. Naomi wants an opportunity. Sony Deville won't give it to her. That's it. Eight months, and that's still all we really accomplished here with this story. Eight months later, and we still don't even know what Sony's issue is with Naomi. This had the potential to be a good storyline at first, but what ended up hurting it is the length of it and how many repetitive segments we've seen in these eight months. It's becoming an endless cycle, and we just started running in circles here with this story. Naomi comes into the office, demands a match, gets that match, Sonya interrupts that match, and then rinse and repeat. That went on non-stop for 8 months. That would have been fine if we saw it once or twice, and then more progression happened after that. But 8 months of the same thing, without any progression, your fans are starting to get burnt out. Speaking of repetitiveness in this story, Sonya came out for Charlotte vs Naomi, and took the referee shirt to become the referee. Seem familiar? That's because we saw this exact same situation happen before. Naomi gets a 7 count on Charlotte, but Sonya refused to count it and then Sonya rings the bell before Naomi taps. And then the feeling amongst the fans after we saw that happen again was, okay, you're clearly out of ideas, let's wrap this story up. So much repetitive segments that never end up going anywhere. It just takes us back to the beginning of a tiring cycle we've been seeing for 8 months now. But then we get a tiny bit of progression later on during the show and after SmackDown. Adam Pearce is speaking with Eric Bischoff. They're talking about leadership. They're talking about tough decisions. And then Sonya comes in. Adam Pearce scolds Sonya for what she's doing to Naomi and says that Sonya and Naomi will have a match next week on SmackDown. Sonya storms out and Eric Bischoff compliments Adam Pearce's leadership skills. So finally, after 8 months, Adam Pearce has watched the product and has seen what's going on. Definitely took him long enough. The weirdest part is that just last week, Adam Pearce said on the bump that he's an equal to Sonya Deville and can't do anything to stop her with the Naomi situation. Fast forward 10 days later and he's scolding her like he's some sort of higher authority than her. So again, inconsistencies like that just really make your head spin. But when it comes to WWE storylines, you gotta shut your brain off sometimes. You're not supposed to think too hard into it. What's also weird from Adam Pearce's side is the response time. 
It'll be understandable if Pierce scolded Sonia about this story back in August or September. But eight months later, where has he been all these months? A lot of people are looking into Eric Bischoff's appearance as well. Considering how Adam Pierce complimented Eric's decision making in WWE over the years, and how Eric even influenced him to step up to Sonia, many fans are wondering if Adam Pierce would put in a good word for Eric Bischoff and get him another job as a decision making WWE official to replace Sonia Deville. Maybe Eric's appearance has deeper meaning. Maybe that appearance means absolutely nothing. It's always hard to tell. Then later on, in a WWE exclusive, a cameraman rolls up on Sonia while she's on the phone with someone. Sonia says, Yeah, obviously I'm concerned about it. What do you want me to do? I don't have any answers, and neither do you. She then gets interrupted for the interview. It's another one of those moments that could mean something or mean nothing at all. But who is Sonia Deville on the phone with? Is she taking orders or quietly working for someone else that does have it in for Naomi? That's possible. That phone call was starting to sound interesting. But when you take into consideration that this Sony Deville phone call conversation was just a digital exclusive and didn't actually air on SmackDown, that likely means that this phone call is not important to the storyline. Now, if we would have seen Sonya have this same actual phone conversation during actual SmackDown programming, that would have changed everything, but that wasn't the case. So, in conclusion, is this storyline a failure? Well, it's all going to come down to the payoff. We waited 8 months. So, what's your big payoff to make this story mean something? Something like Sonya Deville getting fired doesn't really seem like a good payoff here because Sonya has been completely responsible as an official to everyone outside of Naomi. That's another weird part of this story. If Sonya was this massive power trip and was just giving everyone the same treatment, then a firing would be a good payoff. But Sonya is only mean to one single person. It's a very weird story. Sonya Deville vs Naomi is set for SmackDown and at this point, the match has to happen. If Sonya comes out and makes it a handicap or something like that again, then this storyline will simply become a joke. The match has to happen. This has to get wrapped up soon if all you're going to give us is repeated segments. So we'll check back next week and see how that schedule match out turns out. Seth Rollins name dropped John Moxley this week on SmackDown, which was received as a huge moment. This was the first time John Moxley was referred to by his AEW name on WWE television. When WWE mentioned him in the past, it was always Ambrose, but now he's being even called Mox on WWE. Then in the closing moments of the high stakes main event, Roman Reigns purposely got the Usos disqualified by hitting Seth Rollins and basically accepting that the Usos will be banned from ringside. Why did Roman do that? It was a power move not to allow Seth Rollins the satisfaction of pinning the Usos and winning. Roman basically said, I don't need the Usos and purposely cost them that SmackDown match. Roman was just walking up the ramp furious because he knew what the stipulation would now be. Seth Rollins vs Roman Reigns is a scary matchup for Roman. This is the first time in his entire title reign where it feels like he might not walk out with the Universal Championship. So we'll keep a close eye on that storyline as well. But what are your thoughts on today's stories? Leave your comments below. Don't forget to subscribe with all notifications on and leave a like if you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, guys.